Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my precious pack, and welcome back once more to Vega Conflict. We're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about the Demise event, the Zeus, the Glance Cannon, the prize recommendations, just as much covering the ship as we can. But first, let's take care of the prize recommendations list. It is solely based on new technology, and moving forward, this is how they're going to be. It's going to more or less be the primary events as well as what I'd expect you to build in the same time frame. So, first off, pick up the Zeus for 2 million intel. Will it be worth it? So far, I haven't had any problems with it. Second, pick up the Glance Cannon 1, 3, then 2. Pick up the Plasma Screen 1, 3, then 2. And then time tokens, because the Zeus has a 24-hour default build time, we get exactly six time tokens of each class. You can build all six of your ships just by simply farming them. Then you can begin refitting them. I managed to refit three of mine using the time tokens with the following fitting, so you can do the same. Three energy shells, two armor, Zephyr thruster due to weight, and the fact that I love the strafe speed and I didn't want to mess that up. And harmonics because they're primarily being equipped for this initial version to fight Pharmacon. And again, unlike with the garbage trucks, I'm actually going to take the time to wait until I get them to Mark 3 at least. Before I start sending them against the Seg Fault targets. But I don't think that they'll have a problem with them. But the main thing I want to get is I want to get the full shielding and stuff like that because... When you account for 5% shield regeneration after the buff has been activated and no bypass, so the targets just have to take your shields down. Uh, 2,000 shields isn't going to last that long against a 110 target. And the fact that it's only regenerating 1,000 per second for 5 seconds before it has to reactivate it, it's, it's not that good. So I'm going to focus on upgrading, stuff like that, and get it to around 35,000 to 40,000 and that should be pretty good. So, with that out of the way, the recommendations are the time tokens, and you're gonna build the six ships first, then you're gonna refit three of them with armor and shields, along with the Zephyr thrusters and Xeno, because that takes precisely two days, 58 minutes. If you have 11 people in your alliance, yourself and 10 others, you can get free time off of that uh, 58 minute and you'd be able to refit them almost immediately if you're all concurrently playing. And the final one is the 24 uh, um, hour Altarian time tokens to be able to craft the weapons and stuff like that and skip what time you may want to be able to fit. However, due to how this is broken up, I always feel like it's a waste whenever I'm crafting anything that doesn't take 24 hours. And there is one change I would like to suggest from this event based on time tokens for the development team. And that is to alter the time tokens so that the additional time could be put towards the next item instead. So that you'd be able to craft effectively two and then most to a third one for level one glance cannon instead of what it is currently where you have to waste an entire time token. And I mean, even the level 3, it's it's not 24 hours, you're still getting wasted time. This is just a change that would be interesting to see brought to the game. That would be nice. And it would help to prevent wasted time with time tokens to get the most out of every single token. Finally, we have the prize boxes. Nashville is going to be the gold event prize box because they haven't changed them, they haven't messed with them or anything like that, so they're still dropping all this stuff. Still seeing plenty of ships, not very many level 4 items, or level 3 chase thrusters, but still, anything is better than nothing. And that's it. I have a target lined up, in the planet, due to the planet strike currently going on, we're going to hit a level 45 with the fleet, thanks to their fitting. And one more thing about this fitting, if you want to take the additional time after this initial fitting, along with the insta-fit uh, credits, this fitting allows for you to put a harmonic beam capacitor as well, just for the additional ship damage per second. So you can get that on there as well. And it all fits at Mark 1. Let's go ahead and let's go smash the 45 and 
that'll be just about it for the video. I'll see you back in base in just a minute. Well, I'll see you in the fight in less than a second. Alright. A lot of you are going to get a kick out of this ship. It's just... It turns remarkably fast. It... I don't see any major drawbacks to it, and that's kind of what I wanted with the far with the Altarians against the Pharmacon. However, as people point out, it's dominating Umbral fleets as well, and that's that's a bit of a no-no. It's it's not supposed to be doing that. So one thing I can recommend for that for the development team: enhance the um, Umbral ship's ability to bypass shields by default, because right now it's. It's a bit wonky by the fact that they're able to do so much. I'm just going to let the AI kind of do its thing while I talk, but the Glance Cannon. What's good, what's bad about it? Well, the damage per second I know is extremely high, but even better is the fact it has a decent rate of fire. As you can see, the Glance Cannon reloads fairly quickly. It's not like a Vulcan or a Eclipse Driver or something like that, but it reloads pretty good. It could be better, it could be worse, but that's what we have for now. But it's... It looks good. The weapons for it are interesting because, again, they're, they're like the chaining mechanic, but they bounce based off of the angle unless the ship's overdrive is active, then it's irrelevant of the angle because it'll just bounce to the closest target. And the rate of fire is quick enough that most targets you can get them down if they're phasing, and you can actually beat them. Normally what happens when, they, when the enemy AI phases Soul firing weapons can't hit them because you'll fire, they'll phase out after having hit you and it'll keep going. This has just enough of a fire rate for some reason to be able to catch them in that state and actually sit so when they come out of phase, it's quick enough to also turn and fire at them at the direction they're attacking from. And due to its extremely high strafe speed that's like breakneck, it can also maneuver in the direction as well, so on top of turning towards the target, it can also be strafing the close in. But again, I'm not going to be throwing against the DDoS targets just yet. I want to pick up a few Mark III ships, well, an entire fleet of them first. Mark III, Mark IV, Mark V, Mark VI. And I'm going to build multiple of these fleets just to farm the DDoS targets, most likely in full auto. Because I, I honestly, looking at all the stats and how they behave in combat, I would feel comfortable doing that with them. Just flicking the AI on and sending them out. And with such a low build time, fit time, and everything like that, it's not that hard. Because in total, you got one day of crafting time. Armor, weapons, special stuff like that takes around two days, one hour. So three days, one hour in total. And if you're going with the alien fitting, the entire time that it's refitting or building, you're going to be crafting the weapons for it. The weapons will be ready before the ship is. And that's per refit. But that's just... It's going to be good. It's going to be entertaining. However, again, due to the difference in power between this ship and the previous ships, I would recommend that the dev team look at the Umbral's ability to shield bypass and consider enhancing it further than what currently is, possibly take it up to 40% through mark upgrades or 50% through mark upgrades and leave the 20 as the base number. So you know it gets, it gets stronger and stronger as it's mark upgraded. But that's all I have for you today everybody. And again, like I said, at some point this month if they add an Oni version or a retro version, I will try and pick up one of them after the Alliance War and I get the next 1600 coins just so that I can have one, just to mess around with it because unlike every other ship that's been added that I've played with, I won't mind getting a different skin for it because it's just, just it's... I like how it looks. It's extremely decent in combat. The speed is just amazing. Not Farmercon levels of speed, 
note, and with no stasis resistance, you're going to have to choose when you get your resistor, do you want stasis resistance for plasma or pierce? Because you only get one. But my thoughts on the ship, as of right now, it's extremely good, and once that shield, um, once the overdrive activates, the target has to destroy your shields first. And it just feels so good to see Pharmacon not be able to damage the ship and add more damage over time under the shield while the shield is active. But it's, it's, it's going to be dominant until the Umbral fleets have their shield bypass and stuff buffed. And that is the only thing I have to recommend because whenever I look at them, I see these fast moving ships and stuff like that, but I can see them being extremely squishy and easy to destroy in their shields because the highest level armor fitting I could get for this with Mark III was just a little over 20,000 hit points. And if you use all blight weapons, that, that 20,000 hit points isn't that much, especially when a, a cruiser has up towards 2,000, 2,200 without a fleet commander worth of damage per second. And if you give it extremely high shield bypass on top of that, it'll just be able to rip these little things apart under the shield. And that that's that's the way that I see that um, the Umbral ship should be able to counter the Altarians. Just extreme shield bypass to negate the ability to protect themselves. But that's finally it. I adore the ship. Looks good. I'm going to make sure I pick up a special edition. I hope all of you have gotten most of what you want in the event. I've been having a blast just playing around with the ship, farming for the seg fault using the garbage trucks, which I, get, I just, every time I send them in, I know it's going to be three hours or two hours, 40 minutes repair time, but it's just, I can't help it. It's just funny. And with that, everybody, I say, be safe out there in the void, have a pleasant time, happy hunting, and as always, I will see you in the next video.